So, so the other thing that, by the way, that actually is historically interesting about this paper is when the measure was developed, uh, and it be, the development process began about 1998. The uh, that was about 15 years after the the modern recognition of red syndrome. So it had been red syndrome was a very young disorder, and there wasn't much known about adults. Uh, it was uh, seen as a pediatric disorder with decreased life expectancy. Well, the life expectancy has improved dramatically. So now the life expectancy in the U.S. is, is uh, 50 years or, or more than 50. So with that, adults are more and more adults with Red syndrome. So this study was the first one to have data on adults. At a massive level. We published data on 300 individuals which is a very substantial number. So, so and this could have been possible in, in at the time when the original paper in, was published in 2002. It, there wasn't that population. So, so, so it, it also shows where the field of neurodevelopmental is already going. We have made, we have made advances in, in the quality of life, life expectancy. And now we have a different population. We have adults with developmental disorders. We post some of the different set of challenges for most of us who train in the pediatric field. So now we we had to worry about this uh, this patient developing the typical diseases of adults, the chronic disorder like hypertension, diabetes, cancer surveillance, which things that you don't think in a, in a five year old, ten year old child. So so it's changing and. This paper reflects that change 20 years later. So this is an example of international collaboration. And in rare diseases, uh, you need that. Because you know even the United States, which probably we can do a study on our own, we benefit of having collaboration with other countries for these rare diseases. Because they have data and sharing data is so important.